Mike, we're kicking off a new series here on Ungeniused. What is it now? Like weird snack foods instead of weird sodas? What are we doing? Look, there are more weird sodas on the list, but I felt like it was time to take a break from that. All right. Well, let's get into it. I know this one goes to some places. It does. And as you as you probably have seen from the title already, today we're talking about Biosphere 2, a massive set of buildings near the town of Oracle, Arizona. What a cool town name. Uh, Oracle is home to about 3,000 people, so not, not a, a big place. Uh, Biosphere 2 is a 3.14 acre structure that was built from 1987 to 1991 after three years of planning. Every now and then we do an episode where we know we delight people and like basically I assume all Arizonians are like, yes, they're finally talking about the thing. So yeah, we're talking about the thing. We're doing this for you, We sure are. We'll come back to how the project came to be. But the idea behind it was to create a sealed, artificially closed ecological system. This simply means that the interior of the building is completely cut off from the outside of the building and all of the elements. The term is used in relation to things like the life support system designed for use in spaceflight. Not huge buildings, though, in the American Southwest. Different scales sometimes. Mm -hmm. The concept and execution, of course, are related, as one of the goals of Biosphere 2 was to demonstrate the viability of a closed ecological system to support human life in outer space and even on the surface of other planets or the moon. This work was the brainchild of John P. Allen, an American engineer and ecologist, and Ed Bass, an American businessman and environmentalist who provided $150 million in funding. The pair met in the 1970s at a counterculture community in New Mexico and shared an interest in long-term human survivability. There's a whole sidebar about that countercultural movement that I read about out, but it couldn't fit it in but it's it's a whole scene just needed you just need to know that there's a whole scene of people out in the desert doing weird things it's good to know this shared interest was the fuel behind the project which was to build a massive closed ecological system furnish it with various biomes and staff it with teams dedicated to surviving with no outside help all while completing research that could prove vital for life on the moon mars or even a post-apocalyptic earth my favorite of the three Yes. There would be several biomes on this campus of Biosphere 2. It would feature a 20,000 square foot rainforest, a 9,100 square foot ocean with a coral reef, a 4,800 square foot wetlands area, a 14,000 square foot savanna grassland, and a 15,000 square foot fog desert. This is a type of desert where condensation of water left behind by fog supplies the majority of moisture needed by animals and plant life. These areas obviously had to all have their own climate control, and they were separated within the buildings where needed. Soil, plants, and more were brought in from real-life examples of these biomes and placed inside the building. Two by two. No, I made that part that's, up. Oh, that's, good. That part that's good. That's yeah. <laughs> uh, good. Biosphere 2 could be considered a vivarium or an enclosed space to keep and study plants and animals within naturalistic, if semi-artificial environments. Yeah, you can think about uh, this as like really nice zoos have enclosed environments that are meant to mimic where animals naturally live. It's sort of that feeling. I just went to the uh, the Central Park Zoo yesterday and it was like that. There's that area you walk in and it's like super hot and humid. And it's because that's where all the tropical animals are. Yeah, exactly. In addition to the biomes, there was 27,000 square feet of farmland and a human habitat with both living and workspaces. The structure was named Biosphere 2, and you may be thinking to yourself, what's the first one? That's Earth. It was <laughs> Biosphere 2 is meant to be the second fully self-sufficient biosphere after our own planet, which the group dubbed Biosphere 1. There's some real arrogance in that naming, but I kind of like it. I like the idea of like when we get to Biosphere 4, which is just like people building more biospheres inside of Biosphere mm. 2. You know, you just keep going down, down, down. You get like a tiny one. Yo, dog. I heard you like biospheres. <laughs> Put a biosphere inside of your biosphere. This episode of Ungeniused is brought to you by Hello. 
Have you ever tried a buckwheat pillow? They are totally different than the fluffy, soft pillows that most people are used to. They support your head and neck how you want it to, unlike traditional squishy soft pillows, which collapse under the weight of your head. Soft pillows allow your neck to fall in a downward bend, allowing uncomfortable pressure to muscles, nerves, and discs. And I've been told that all three of those are important parts of your neck. The Hello Pillow is awesome. It really makes sleep much more comfortable. And I'm telling you, the older I get, the more I value a good night's sleep. Steven, let me tell you, I'm in a hotel this week and I don't have my hollow pillow and I am not feeling good. Let me tell you that. Like my neck does not feel right. I am very unhappy. I want my good buckwheat pillow back. Are you sleeping with the Vision Pro on? Just tell the truth. Uh, no, no, not yet. I mean, uh, who knows where it's going to go? You know, you can never tell with these things. With the support of the Hello Pillow, you probably could. <laughs> you know what? Actually, that's a pretty, that's a pretty clutch pairing. We should, we should <laughs> let them know. Yeah. One of my favorite things about the Hello Pillow is that it stays cool and dry. We've all woken up trying to like turn the pillow over. To the cool side, you don't have to do that with Hello. It could be because it stays cool and dry because it doesn't absorb and retain body heat and moisture. Buckwheat just breathes better. And if you use two pillows or like fold your pillow over in an attempt for proper support, that's a sign that your current pillow isn't firm or thick enough. Hello support allows you to keep your head and neck where you want them. It can even add or remove the fill from the zippered opening so you can adjust the pillow's thickness to your liking. People have been sleeping on buckwheat pillows for centuries and are popular in Japan to this day. And if Mike was staying at a more fancy hotel, he could have seen it on a pillow menu. Life goals. Buckwheat is just a more natural way to sleep, better than a sack of plucked bird feathers or petroleum-based foam. And Hello is made right here in the USA with quality construction and materials. Their certified organic cotton case is cut and sewn for durability, and the buckwheat is grown and milled in the U.S., People love this pillow, which you will see in their customer reviews. Ungenius listeners can sleep on it for 60 nights. And if Hello isn't for you, just ship it back and they'll give you a refund. Go to hellopillow.com slash ungenius. And if you try more than one pillow, you can get a discount of up to $20 per pillow, depending on the size. Get fast, free shipping on every order. And 1% of all profits are donated to the Nature Conservancy. And why not give the gift of better sleep? Hello is a unique gift to your friends and family and one that they will appreciate each and every night. Once again, you want to go to hellopillow.com slash ungenius to try it for 60 days. That link is in the show notes. Our thanks to Hello for their support of the show and Relay FM. If you go to the Wikipedia page for Biosphere 2 and look at the photos, you're going to see a series of huge glass buildings. The above ground structures are made of steel tubing, creating a strong frame to hold high performance glass. Some parts of the structure are rounded, while the main area has several steps up like a pyramid with a flat top. Everyone's favorite type of pyramid. I think it's beautiful. I think it's a really, oh, like, yeah, of course. The building's incredible. It took almost five years to construct, which included work on extensive underground areas to house the systems needed to circulate air and water, in addition to the components of the huge solar system that provided power to the campus, along with a backup natural gas, quote, energy center, mm. which I assume is just a generator. Like, Sounds dangerous. It's just a generator. It's a generator. The idea is that the building would be totally self-sufficient with new ceiling techniques invented and patented to keep the glass panels airtight. There was an issue with this design. You may have already thought about it. During the day, heat from the sun, remember this is in Arizona, would heat the air inside the large glass buildings and that air would expand and then it would cool and contract at night. So you have this change in air pressure in the sealed building. To help mitigate these changes inside the structures, large diaphragms called lungs, which is Mm. troubling, were Mm. built inside several large dome-shaped buildings on the property. So So the air pressure would basically kind of be relieved as the temperature went up and down. The environment had to be tightly controlled, with different biomes calling for different temperatures and humidity levels. The largest power draw was cooling, but heating had to be supplied in the winter too, with closed loop pipes and air handlers working year-round to keep everything in check. After the five-year construction was completed, Biosphere 2 was home to those various biomes that Mike mentioned, complete with plants and some small animals. 
All of this was to be the backdrop of long-term missions in which crew would enter Biosphere 2 and attempt to live together while surviving on just what that facility could provide them. We will talk about those missions in our next episode. But even before crews made their way inside, the building itself, as you may imagine, had garnered the attention of the outside world. Some thought Alan and Bass, along with their teams, were simply playing scientists and lacked the backgrounds or tools to truly study human survival, often citing Alan's lack of scientific education. Others doubted that the building was truly capable of being self-sustaining, calling the whole thing a theatrical effort. Not everyone was so negative about the project. Discover Magazine said Biosphere 2 was, quote, the most exciting scientific project to be undertaken in the United States since President John F. Kennedy launched us towards the moon. I didn't know he did that. Was he, like, on a slingshot? Let, you know, like, ooh, off we go. Is that how he did it? Not exactly. I mean, you don't even believe he went to the moon, so what do you know? No, you didn't go to the moon, so. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really wide range of reactions, though. Like, I feel like everyone in the scientific community had an opinion on this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I understand, right? You have a small group of people using private funding to build a huge experimental facility to lock people inside for months at a time when they were studied, therefore, like lab rats. I mean, when you put it like that, I kind of get it. Next time, we'll see if these critics were right. In the meantime, if you want to read more about Biosphere 2, I will say the article will spoil some of what we're going to talk about on the next episode, but there are a bunch of links in the show notes. So maybe don't. In your podcast player and on the web at relay.fm slash ungenius slash 205. If you'd like to send in your favorite Wikipedia topic, you can do so. There's a feedback form also in the show notes. Uh, just drop us a note and it'll go on the list for future consideration. And Mike, until next time we build a giant habitat and hide ourselves inside, say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all.